Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today we'll be taking a look at this integral and we will be expressing it in terms of the complementary error function. Um, the complementary error function is defined like this. It's usually uh, denoted ERFC of Z. I'm just going to use X because, you know, who cares? Um, all right, so let's see. The first thing right off the bat, we're just going to recognize that this is two times the integral from zero to pi over two because of the even evenness of the function. All right, so next, um, we're going to let U equal tangent x, therefore du is equal to secant squared x dx, or in other words, dx is equal to 1 over u squared plus 1 du. All right, so that's going to mean our... Uh, our function i is just going to be equal to, let's see, 2 times the integral from, let's see, we're still going to have 0, but it's going to become infinity. The reason, I, the reason I'm not writing it on a new line is because this, uh, this problem is going to, it's going to be a very long problem, so I need to save space on the board. So this is going to become an e to the negative u squared over u squared plus 1 d. And if you've watched the, if you've uh, watched the videos on this channel, you know I've already solved this one, but it's a really nice problem, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, solve it again. All right, so we just did a bunch of work to get back to a problem that I've already solved, so let's go ahead and solve it again. All right, first step in solving this is going to be to reparameterize it as a function of t. All right, so we're going to let f of t equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t, and we'll just say x squared over x squared plus 1 dx. I switched back from u to x. All right. Well, now we can say that i is now equal to 2 times our function f evaluated at 1. All right. Um, we can also say that uh, f evaluated at 0 is pi over 2. It is. If you plug in 0 for t right here, we'll get 1 over x squared plus 1 as our integrand, making uh, the whole thing equal to pi over 2. All right. There's f of t. Now let's find f prime of t. All right. f prime of t is going to be equal to the derivative of this side with respect to t, which is just going to be the exact same thing except taking a partial with respect to t of the integrand. So we're going to get negative integral 0 to infinity of x squared e to the negative tx squared over x squared plus 1 dx. I'm going to put a parentheses right here introduce a plus 1. That had the effect of subtracting the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative tx squared over x squared plus 1, so we need to add it back. But we'll notice that that's just the exact same thing as adding back f of t. All right, so now we can cross that out, and this whole expression right here is going to evaluate to negative square root of pi over 2 times t to the negative 1 half. Um, because this is just a variation on the Gaussian integral, you just make the substitution that tx squared is equal to some new variable squared. And then you'll need to know the Gaussian integral also, but you can arrive at this. All right. So let's see. Rewriting this a little bit. Uh, let's say that f prime of t, um, let's see, y's going down there, so, uh, f prime
prime of t minus f of t is equal to negative square root of pi over 2 times t to the negative 1 half, right? That's just rearranging all these parts. All right, now we need to, uh, we need to use this and recognize that it is a first order linear um, differential equation. And uh, we can solve that with an integrating factor. I've gone over the integrating factor before, so I'm not going to, to reshow uh, why it works or even how to find it. I'm just going to jump right to the fact that our integrating factor in this case is e to the negative t. Um, and what that means is we just multiply both sides of this equation by e to the negative t, and then something nice happens. So let's do it. e to the negative t e to the negative t all right well the thing that happened was now this is the result of a product rule in fact this is just what you would get if you took the derivative with respect to t of f of t times e to the negative t because we'll have first times the derivative of the second right here, times the second times the derivative of the first, or plus the second times the derivative of the first right here. All right, so that's still equal to this. So we have the derivative with respect to t of f of t e to the negative t is equal to, well, let's just, let's leave it like that for now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this part, set it equal to this part, which it is, and then integrate both sides of that equation from 1 to infinity. All right, so we're taking this side, we're integrating it from 1 to infinity, and we're taking this side and integrating it from 1 to infinity. Sorry for my sloppy notation there. All right. So what happens if we take the, uh, what happens if we evaluate this? Well, we'll evaluate it the standard way. And then we're just, basically what that means is we're just going to find the antiderivative of the integrand and then evaluate it at the bounds. Well, finding the antiderivative of this integrand is extremely easy. We just, it's going to be the antiderivative of a derivative, which is just the function itself. So we're just going to have f of t times e to the negative t evaluated from 1 to infinity. And that's going to be equal to, all right, this side, let's see, we'll bring out the negative square root of pi over 2. And then we're st we'll still have the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative t times t to the negative one-half dt. All right. Let's make the substitution. We'll use w this time. We'll say that w squared is equal to t. Therefore, 2w dw equals dt. All right. So let's just go ahead and evaluate this. Let's see, what's f at infinity? If we plugged in infinity for here, we'd get zero. We still need to check what this would be. e to the negative infinity is zero. Zero times zero is zero. All right, so we don't need that. So f at one, well, okay. Well, f at one is i over two right? Because i is equal to 2 times f of 1. So f at 1 is equal to i over 2. So f at 1 is equal to i over 2 times e to the negative 1. That's just 1 over e. So we'll just put an e in the denominator right here. All right. So i over 2e. All 
I'm taking care of the evaluation of this right here. That's just I over 2E. So that's equal to, I'm sorry, negative I over 2E, right? Because we're evaluating this, and that, uh, that has a negative sign attached to it. So that's negative I over 2E is equal to negative square root of pi over 2 times the integral from, let's see, if we plugged in 1 for t, w is still 1, same with the infinity, and then we're going to get e to the negative w squared, <clears throat> um, and then t to the negative 1 half, well, let's see, if we did t to the negative 1 half, we would get w squared to the negative 1 half. Half. In other words, w to the negative 1 is equal to t to the negative 1 half. So that's just w to the negative 1. And then dt, we have 2, which we'll use to cancel out that 2 right there. w, which we'll cancel out with that w to the negative, to the negative 1. And then all right, let's cancel these negative signs and multiply both sides of the equation by 2e. So we now have i is equal to 2e square root of pi times the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative w squared Well, we almost have something that resembles our complementary error function. Not quite, though. We want 2 over the square root of pi. Well, let's, let's make ourselves have that. Well, we have the 2. We have the 2 right there. But now let's get an over the square root of pi. Well, let's see. We divided by square root of pi, so we need to multiply by the square root of pi. All right. So this is going to be, all right, let's take, let's see, we need the 2 over the square root of pi, so we'll have pi e, pi times e times what's left over, which is just the complementary error function evaluated at the point 1. So that's e times pi times e r f c. I believe that's correct. Let me check my notes real quick here. I times E times the complementary error function of 1. Yep, that's it. Um, pretty nice little problem right there. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that.